Welcome back guys, my name's Shane. This video is part one in a brand new series and this one's called What I Got From Eric Clapton. So without question, for me personally, back in 1999 was the first time I heard From The Cradle, such a great blues album before I was even playing electric guitar and I heard it, I got home, I was living in Michigan at the time, I got home and I was super inspired and I went and bought a Squire Strat because he played a Strat and I thought I'm gonna learn how to play blues. In terms of blues players, he was by far my number one. He's probably the guy I've taken the most from in terms of inspiration and licks over the years as well. There's plenty of his songs I used to play note for note just to capture the feel and also to capture the timing, the phrasing and all that kind of stuff, which is second to none in my opinion. I know a lot of people who might be older than me might love the cream stuff. I was never as big a fan of that as I was the blues from the 90s and some of the late 80s stuff he did as well. It's just killer. That to me is the kind of blues that really inspired me to want to learn to play. And if you're into Cream and you love his playing back then, that's all good too. But I was introduced to him at a later time than that. I really love From the Cradle, one of the best albums of all time. So I'm going to show you some of the things I took from that. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how I go about it and some of the sort of techniques about it. Now, for those who are expecting note for note licks, that's not what this video is about. It's about trying to capture the feel, showing you some of the techniques he used, as well as going over some of the stuff that you might be able to use in your own playing, because I didn't make some of this up, but over the years I've kind of twisted it. It was funny, going back to this kind of style of playing, I used to be able to nail it a whole lot more, but my playing's changed over the years, and trying to go back in time, so to speak, was pretty tough. So some of this took a while, so if you do appreciate the video and you enjoy it, you get some value out of it, please give it a thumbs up, leave your comments below. Now, if this is something you wanna see, I got plenty of inspirations on my wall back here who I've got lots from over the years as well, especially this guy right here, and lately, this guy right here. Tommy Castro, Chris Kane, Albert King, Albert Collins, BB King, they're all fantastic players, but I wanted to start with Eric because Eric was by far the most influential in the early days of me playing. One of the things that Eric Clapton did, maybe better than anybody, was work the dynamics. He never blew his wad too fast in terms of his guitar solos, which means he'd start soft with the band if they're playing soft, and he'd escalate it up. So any of his slow blues, especially his live stuff, you'll hear this to no end, and it's he's such he's got great reservation in his playing. He never wants to just go all the way to the maximum straight away. I see this at blues jams a lot, or even with bands where the solo is at maximum volume as soon as they get a go. He takes his time, he paces himself, and then he takes it to the roof. So here's a rough example of that. Here we go.
let's talk a little bit about 16th notes. Now, I can't play fast to save myself, but some of the 16th notes I've managed to work out in my playing were thanks to a lot of the live clips I've seen of Eric Clapton, the live DVDs, live albums, must have pretty much all of his CDs up till about a few years back. So yeah, there's plenty of music in my collection of his and I always loved his 16th note approach. It was just an easy way to kind of get into it and I could never quite replicate it properly either. He does a few other parts that I've never really been able to nail, but I got the gist of them enough and maybe changed them enough to work with my own clunky playing. So I'll explain a little bit about that and I can show you, you know, I think what's going on with some of it, at least in my interpretation. So here we are. This first Clapton lick I've been playing for years. This might not be exactly how it's played, but it goes a little bit like this in the key of C. <laughs> And this is a bit of a 16th thing, so you gotta get this going nice and quickly. Now one of the tricks to it is it's only three notes, right? So That's it. So you're only on the B and G string. And it lends itself to a lot of other runs. So you hear him play that a lot. Now Eric's bends are some of my favorite. He was heavily influenced with his bends from Albert King, but he never really quite sounded like Albert King because you've got to kind of capture a lot of his other playing, which he kind of did to some extent, but I like his bends. They ended up just sounding like him. I could always pick his bends and vibratos out over anybody else's. I'm gonna show you a little bit about his approach right now. So we've ruined the key of C again. If you're in a, if he's playing a shuffle, for example, his approach might vary a little bit, but there's lots of bends from just about everywhere from position one, position two, and then he'd also play over position four a lot. Then he'd go back up to the C and play up here as well. I always liked the fact when he'd just let the notes ring out like. And notice the vibrato at the end of the note. It's never, it's never that. It was always at the end of the note, which is some of my favorite bends of all time. Let's take a look at his turnaround. So one of the things that I really loved about it, when he plays electric guitar, he doesn't do that many traditional turnarounds. They're always licks that resolve to the same spot. When he's playing acoustic guitar, he does the traditional ones a whole lot more as it sort of helps fill it in. But on electric guitar, you won't ever really see him do too many of these unless they're at the start of a song. <laughs> Like I said, you see him do that at the start of the song, but not during it a lot of the time. He'll be doing something like this. You can play any number of licks on time and just resolve it to here or here. And it sounds great. Yeah, so he used licks as a turnaround. And he'll also do this over a shuffle, so if we speed it up. Just something different to the ears as opposed to always going. Now there's plenty of other turnarounds. You'll see him do these ones occasionally at the start of song. Those kind of turnarounds as well, but the cool thing with it is you can play licks in time with the turnaround and it gives it a point of difference. I really dig it. Thanks for watching guys. My name's Shane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, all that kind of stuff. Now, I hope you got some value out of this. I'm not gonna tab this out because I don't write tab and it's too time consuming, but you can work it out. Just watch it back, slow it down if something was too fast, but I tried to explain it the best way that I could and go to the actual source, you know, load up a live show of Eric's from the 90s, and odds are it's gonna be just killer blues. There's so much good stuff about Eric on YouTube. I know he watches it as well, and if you ever see this, Eric, thanks for the inspiration, man, I appreciate it. So yeah, 
just uh, go check out the source because I can only approximate it to some extent. And as I said before, my playing's changed over the years and I've still got a lot of that in my playing obviously, but the connection is different these days. I'm not thinking so much like I did back then. So there's a lot of other inspirations on the wall back here that comes into the playing as well as turning someone else's thing into your own thing. And that's what Stevie Ray did as well. You know, like he was heavily influenced from Hendrix and also from Albert King. But he didn't sound like really, he did sound like both of them to some extent, but he didn't sound like them completely. And that's the cool thing about music. Dr. John said that best. What came out of that was him. And same with Eric, you know, Freddie King, there's that influence there. He's got the BB King influence. He's got lots of other influences, Muddy Waters. But what came out of it was his sound. So there you go. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. I'll catch you soon. See ya.